in the darkest hour of one Saturday night in Lanlate Kingdom, a set of twins were born. Two beautiful girls, born into the family of Papa and Mama Orusha King. Their father was a successful gold merchant that traded far and wide. He named the newborn twins Aweru and Ashake. As the twins grew, there was a great physical difference between them. Despite the fact that they were fed the same meal and ate at the same time, yet the twin named Aweru looked too thin, skinny and tall, while Ashake, the other twin, looked curvy. As they grew older, Aweru became the object of mockery for everyone in the village because of her figure. They called her horrible names like skeleton, a jagbibe, which means thin fish. And she would often cry back home, where her parents always do their best to pacify her. Even her twin sister, Ashake, would also give her words of encouragement. No one wanted to be Aweru's friend. Most social groups in the village rejected her. The few groups that accepted her used every chance they got to humiliate and laugh at Aweru till she gets tired and fed up and stop attending their meetings. Ashake, her twin sister on the other hand, had so many friends and was a member of various social groups in the village. The only thing that kept Aweru sane in all of this madness was her cooking skills. She was a really wonderful cook to the extent that whenever she prepares food for her family, everyone ends up licking their plates and praising her for the delicious meal. Her home was really the safe haven for her, but whenever she steps out of the house, the wolves in form of villagers are always there to ridicule her for being skinny. Especially whenever she and her twin sister go to the market, people start to compare, whisper and gossip and start to stare. One afternoon, the twins headed to the market to get some food ingredients. Ashake, why did you suck Aweru's blood? A fish seller said this while giggling hard and everyone in the market joined in laughing. Watch out for the strong wind tomorrow, Aweru, so you don't lose your balance, another person added. Aweru was so sad and dejected. She couldn't even utter a word. You should all be ashamed of yourselves, Ashake fired back angrily at them. Most of you have children, and if you don't, it must be because you are too bitter to have one. But I am sure you have siblings, yet you behave like fools. Aweru was so happy her twin sister had her back. Ashake would always stand up for Aweru against these mean bullies until one day. Ashake's boyfriend named Aremu came visiting. Aremu is the son of a famous cocoa farmer and he has been in a love relationship with Ashake for the past two years. He came to inform her that they won't be getting married anymore because his family are not in support of their union. Why? Am I not good enough for you? Ashake asked Aremu in tears. You know you are perfect, but my parents fear your twin sister's skinny gene might manifest on our children if we get married. Ashake couldn't believe her years. Her world came crashing down and she began to resent her twin sister. She was still crying herself to sleep every night when she was also sent out of all her social groups because people didn't like how she stood up for her skinny twin sister. Ashake blamed all these woes and misfortunes on her sister Aweru and decided she was going to make her life miserable. One day, Aweru cooked a delicious meal for the house like she always did. But Ashake came into the kitchen and poured sand into the pot of food her sister just made. Aweru looked confused. 
Why did you do that? She screamed. Shut your mouth, skinny witch. Ashake fired back. The following week, Awero fetched a bucket of water and left it in the bathroom to go into her room and get herself changed before having a bait. Ashake sneaked into the bathroom and poured something into her sister's bathing water. Unknowing to Awero, she returned and took a bait with the contaminated water. She started to itch all over. She scratched herself so bad and screamed loudly. Her parents had to rub her body with palm oil before the itching reduced. Ashake was laughing all through, which made Awero realize her twin sister had done this to her. Unlike before, when she stood up for her sister in public. Now, whenever they go to the market, Ashake would loudly call Awero a skinny skeleton in the presence of everyone to make them see and hear she is done standing up for her. This made Awero so sad and she cried day and night. Their parents would scold Ashake and warn her to desist from humiliating Awero. She is your twin sister for crying out loud. I didn't raise you to be this way, their mother would say. But still, Ashake felt no remorse and refused to listen. Awero destroyed my life. The love of my life, Haremu, left me because of this thin stick, Ashake shouted. Their mother who couldn't believe what she just said got so angry and slapped Ashake hard on the cheek. It was woes, mockery, and humiliation every day for Aweru from her twin sister and the entire village. But there came a time, the twins' village known as Lanlate Kingdom and two other neighboring kingdoms named Mojiri and Borikpe were preparing for a once-in-a-decade contest called the Queen Maiden Competition. For this competition, each kingdom was supposed to put out three of their most capable, competitive, and all round beautiful maiden out to represent the kingdom. The villagers in Lanlate started projecting the names of the three maidens they like or think would represent their kingdom in the Queen Maiden competition. Some even jokingly mentioned Awero's name, and they all laughed out mockingly. One of them added, We will put a skeleton forward to represent humans. And they all laughed again. One of the other kingdoms would be hosting this year's competition because Lanlate hosted the last one. Awero went to fetch water at the village stream one afternoon. When she met a man called Adio, Adio is one of the organizers of the Queen Maiden competition from the neighboring kingdom hosting this year's contest. But Awero didn't know this. Immediately he saw Awero, he was so thrilled and amazed by her stature. What beauty is this? he said to Awero. You are blessed with a lovely figure that many people would kill for, Adio added. Awero looked so confused hearing these words. She felt it was just being sarcastic, but Adio was looking really thrilled and he told her he was in their village to get the names of the three maidens that would be representing them in the upcoming competition. I am sure your name would be on the list because you look fit for the competition, Adio said confidently. But Awero told him that that was not going to happen because everyone hated her in the village and wouldn't even think of recommending her for such competition. She also said aside her parents, he was the first person to ever think of her stature as good. Everyone else called her skeleton and other bad names. Adio was shocked to hear this and persuaded her to dress well and make sure to come watch the competition, even if she wasn't going to partake. Awero hesitated at first, but later agreed to show up. On the day of the competition, 
The other two kingdoms, Lanlate and Mojiri, traveled down to the palace of the host kingdom, Borikpe, where the competition would take place. The twins and their parents were also present, all looking radiant and elegant. After the three girls representing each kingdom in the competition were called out, the organizers announced that there would be an additional contestant sponsored by the host king himself. One of the privileges the host king enjoys in the queen maiden competition is the power to add one more maiden as one of the contestants. Everyone was eager to know the lucky maiden that would be joining the other nine contestants. The organizers then called out the name of Awero as the chosen contestant sponsored by the king to join the other maidens. She was so shocked. Her fellow villagers were also confused, shocked and jealous of this. Even Ashake, her twin sister, was so angry about this. What will a drumstick be useful for in this contest? Ashake mumbled to herself. But all of them couldn't do anything to stop it. Awero's parents were also happy for their girl and started clapping hard, cheering her on. Awero, who is still in shock, hesitated to step out at first. But her parents kept clapping and this boosted her confidence. She stepped out, looking so tall and elegant. She had dressed so elegantly and with grace as well. As she joined the other nine maidens, the competition began, and the first stage was the cooking contest. The competing maidens were all taxed with cooking traditional dishes. Awero, who already had superb culinary skills, finished preparing a meal quickly. It was like her walk in the park for her. The judges tasted the meals cooked by the ten maidens and announced the five maidens who did so well and would be proceeding to the next stage of the competition. It was no surprise to hear Awero as one of the five victors. After all, she is a good cook who made delicious meals already for her family before the contest. The second stage was about finding a treasure that was hidden in the forest and the first maiden to return with the hidden treasure would be crowned the queen maiden of the three kingdoms. But there was a clause. The five maidens had to swim across a river to get to the forest where the treasure was hidden. Many of the maidens couldn't swim fast enough, but Awero could swim a lot faster because she was fit and therefore had light weight. She was the fastest swimmer. She got into the forest and started searching all over for the treasure. She searched and searched, and 15 minutes in, she was still searching. Another maiden named Jibike finished swimming and proceeded to the forest. She saw Awero and also started searching for the treasure. Few minutes later, Awero looked at a direction in the bush and saw a blue shiny treasure. That must be it! She screamed, forgetting it was a competition. The other maiden Jibike heard this and raced over to the treasure direction. It turned into a running competition because now Awero had to catch up. Both of them ran, but unfortunately for Awero, her clothes was hooked by a tree branch. She fell to the ground and Jibike got to the treasure before her. But something unexpected happened. Awero, still on the floor, saw a lot of other blue treasures in the bushes. They looked just like the first one she saw. And this made something click in Awero's head. These blue treasures were a bunch of distractions from the real treasure they had come to find. Awero stood up and wanted to tell GBK, the other maiden, but she learned from her previous mistake and decided to keep this discovery to herself. Jibike, on the other hand, raced back to the riverbank with the fake treasure and told the three other maidens she had found the treasure. They believed her 
and felt they already lost the competition. So, together, they swam back to the kingdom. Awero, still searching the forest, felt water drip on her from above. She looked up and saw a golden box on a tree. It sparkled so much, and this convinced Awero it was the real treasure they were looking for. Because of her tall figure, she climbed the tree easily and carried the golden box. She opened it and saw several other colors of those blue treasures she saw in the bushes. She closed the box and journeyed back to the palace. Awero got to the palace and every single eye was on her. She looked so tired carrying the big box of treasure. Immediately she got to the rest of the contestants, including GBK, who was looking at her with so much envy. The organizers unveiled the drawing of the treasure the maidens were supposed to return with. And to Awero's fellow villagers' surprise, Awero came back with the exact treasure. She was declared the winner, crowned and named the Queen Maiden of the Three Kingdoms. She was also given lots of treasures, such as gold, clothes, and a house of her choice. Our villagers were shocked, but had to hide it. They all started showing our fake affection and apologizing for how they treated her. Her parents were overjoyed, and Ashake, her twin sister, felt so ashamed and didn't know what to say to her. When they returned home, Remembering how much she humiliated her twin sister, Ashake decided she would pack her things out of the house because she was so ashamed of herself. But Awero stopped her. Why would you leave your family, Ashake? Awero asked. Ashake started crying. I am so sorry for how I treated you, Awero. You are my twin sister, but I treated you like an animal. I prefer to please outsiders than my own flesh and blood. Let me just leave. This shame is too much for me to bear. Ashake cried out loud. Ashake, I can never eat you. We came to this world through our mother's womb on the same day. I love you no matter what, Ashake, and I forgive you. The twin sisters hugged each other and lived happily ever after. The moral lessons of this story are numerous, but a moral lesson that stands out is that we should all embrace ourselves. No matter your situation, there is always beauty in being unique or different. When life gives you lemon, turn it to lemonade. Stop listening to the noise in form of mockery or humiliation from other people and because only you and you can show them what you've got. Please let me know the beautiful country you are listening to this from. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. See you all at the top.